There's a story coming out in Archaeology Magazine in the spring that's covering um, our recent work at the Emerald Site, which is a hilltop lunar shrine complex related to the great ancient city of Cahokia. We started our work at the Emerald Site. In fact, I started many years ago. It's, it's, it's always been seen as an unusual site. Um, people have scratched their heads about this site because it was known to have multiple mounds. We now know 12, including one large platform mound that looks a lot like Monk's Mound at Cahokia. Um, and yet there weren't many artifacts ever found in association with it by collectors. Um, Indiana University and the University of Illinois, Susan Alt and myself, received a, a grant uh, in 2011 to begin really uh, serious excavations and geophysical work to, to figure out what this site is all about. And our, and our idea was that it could be a religious space based in part on the um, arrangement of mounds. That is, the mounds are, were built in rows um, and the rows align with the maximum northern moonrise um, that takes place once every 18.6 years. Based on that, we, we received some funding. Um, uh, and in fact, we received more funding from the John Templeton Foundation to do excavations to prove a couple of things. One, that it's a lunar shrine complex. And two, that it has something to do with the rise of Cahokia. Um, we've excavated four or five large blocks or areas within which we have evidence of 80 um, architectural constructions, pole and thatch buildings, um, including some that we are now calling shrine houses because of all the special materials that we're finding in association with the floors of those houses. Uh, and surprise, surprise, those buildings are also aligned with um, the, the, the maximum north position um, that the moon would rise once every 18.6 years. What matters here is not that we just have found a shrine complex near Cahokia, but that uh, the date of the shrine complex. We now have um, dates on the earliest buildings, these shrine houses, that places their construction right before the conversion of Cahokia from a big village into a North American city. Uh, in fact, we even, there's even historic accounts that a, a road connected, an Indian road connected the Emerald site with Cahokia as if there might have been regular back and forth movement of people from one to the other. Uh, and so the fact that we have this now at the beginning of Cahokia uh, is signaling to us that it has something to do with the very foundations of this city. Our research is showing the clear significance. The fact that it's intact still, uh, at least the lower levels are intact, the large pyramid is owned by the state of Illinois, but that's the only thing that's publicly owned. The site itself is the second largest site in the region, uh, maybe the third, after Cahokia and East St. Louis. Um, and it's owned by a few, a few landowners. Uh, and what really needs to happen is um, a, a governmental body, probably the federal government, needs to just purchase it and, and make it part of a larger national historic park centered at Cahokia or, and or East St. Louis.